Hello and welcome to a new video. Today we're going to take a look at the new Naganadel in the Great League, or Catch Cup, depending on how you want to say it. But we only have this new Pokemon here right now. We can actually get it below 1,500 CP, which I always love. I always love to collect all those legendary Pokemon for the Great League. That's my hobby. Don't ask me why. But um, this Pokemon is going to be interesting. It is quite similar compared to what the pre-evolution can do, which you also already took a look at on this channel, I think like twice. Um, but you have a little bit less bulk, which means you have a little bit more attack weight, which is kind of interesting, especially if you also paired with a typing that's in general a little bit better because you have a little bit less weaknesses and also more resistances in general. Like dragon typing is a decent defensive typing and so Definitely a cool pairing, you know, the typing anyway, from Pokemon like Dragalge. But also, this thing here is going to be definitely way squishy. It's just like, honestly, like you're gonna get destroyed quite easily. Poipel definitely was able to take some more hits, but yeah, both of them are going to be cool. Um, I was thinking of going for acrobatics on this Pokemon, which is like kind of the one move that Poipel doesn't have, but this thing has, which is a good charge move that's flying typing, but... Like, you kind of really want to have the Fels thing, in my opinion, just because you're going to have, like, you have already a very high attack stat, you can buff the attack stat even further. It is your cheapest move to get to, so, like, it's your bait move as well. And it was definitely the move that you kind of want to have on this Pokemon, if you want to have this Pokemon. But how do you even get this Pokemon? You have to basically have this thing as your buddy, like the pre-evolution Poipel, and catch 20 Dragon-type Pokemon. Again, for me, it was like two hours out in the rain, which was not really ideal for me either. But I was able to at least get some Dratini, but there's no rush to it anyway. Like in this event, we're going to have Dratini as a spawn, there's going to be more Dragon-type Pokemon available eventually as well. It's rumored to be a Dragon-type Pokemon for the next community day, so like you don't have to rush for this Pokemon at all. Anyway, let's take a look at the gameplay here a little bit more. After talking about how to get this thing and how good this thing is, you're going to see here our lead of Man Bus. I was not really expecting to see any electric type Pokemon because I haven't really seen them too often recently. So I was kind of fine having a double electric type weakness with the lead as well as the Seisob of the Tentacruel. Turns out this was a very silly mistake because the amount of electric type Pokemon I encountered, the amount of people that built a new charger bug for this cup was kind of wild and so I'm very very happy when this cup finally is away tomorrow and we have normal open Great League and I think we have like all three major leagues available again which is kind of nice. But anyway, let's take a look at the gameplay here right now because you're going to have our Naganadel aligned against the Lantern. We were able to go for a CMP tie with the Fell Stinger to boost our own attack and we're gonna see that the opponent swaps back into the Crocolore and this is going to be quite interesting because now we know that that they're going to be weak against us in the back and so we can actually go for hopefully a triple kill as they're going to have the superior. And the Ganondorf can beat basically most fire, water as well as grass type Pokemon which is quite funny and so the opponent had literally a team of all three of them and the Ganondorf is just going to town here farming down the superior and just wins the game. Next opponent, one of the casters as well, we're going to have a pretty mediocre lead, like it's not a bad lead, it's not a good lead, it is Hippoden against the Mandibus, which is quite neutral. They swap into their own Mandibus, I just decided to go ahead and go into my Tentacruel because I have two Pokemon in the back that's weak to ground typing, they have a ground type in the lead, and I just decided to use a shield on the first one because I kind of wanted to debate a potential Scald, hoping that they would use a shield here, but they decided to go ahead and let the move go through, which is fine for us as well because they're going to get the defense drop, which is going to help us with the fast move pressure, plus also maybe a later on if they align their Mandibus against our Mandibus again, but here we can still go for a Scald, forcing a potential shield or the knockout, which I'm both fine with and we're gonna see here that we can align ourselves, which is definitely kind of important as they're gonna go back into their opponent. I'm gonna try, I wanted to go at least for the S spray again, but they're gonna go for the Weather Ball to knock me out first. I can go back into my Mandibus, go straight for the Dark Poles. Two Dark Poles might be enough to knock them out, let's find, I mean, let's not find out here because they use a shield as well. But we most likely gonna find out very soon as you guys see as well how much a weather ball does. Not too much, while super effective, it does non-step and also a powder is like not the crazy attack rated Pokemon. So we're going to see that another Dark Pulse is most likely enough, but I could also just go for an Aerial Ace, which I should most likely do here at this point. They decide to go for another Weather Ball, I should be able to survive another one as well. But at this point, my Mandibus is going to be so low that I'm just going to go for the safe play of going for the Dark Pulse. And now, it just depends if our Naganadil is going to have a positive matchup against whatever they have in the back. It is going to be the Polyrath, and I make a little bit of a mistake, I should just go straight for the Felstinger. I should have just went straight for the Felstinger, and this is going to be kind of um, costly here now, because I get 
the free counter in, which I could have avoided if I just went straight for the Felstinger. Plus, they use a the shield here anyway. And now if I went yeah, here, like that's kind of fine because we kind of get a free poison jab in there because we go for the CMP tie. But if I just went ahead and went for the Felsting a little bit earlier, I would have definitely been able to win this game. I like this, I'm going to lose this. My own mistake for sure. Um, could have played it a little bit better, but I kind of want to yeah, learn a little bit more as well again. That's definitely something I kind of want to do again. I kind of want to go back into tournaments as well. And I definitely have to improve for that. So I definitely want to see what I can do for that for the next season maybe as well and uh, see if I maybe play some more tournaments again. I think it's kind of the cool thing of it. I would imagine that um, Pokemon Go, by the way, like that is a lot of damage from a Thunderbolt that's resisted. I would imagine that Pokemon Go is pushing more towards like the play Pokemon format anyway. So I kind of want to bring some maybe show six pick three format on this channel as well. Hopefully you would enjoy this as well because I feel like it's going to be kind of important for the future for the game anyway. Anyway, as well, here we're going to have the Gallade against us. It's very likely that they decide to go for a close combat. So using a shield here is totally fine. Close combat is going to be able to yeah, go shielded as they're going to go for another one straight away. Let's see what they're going to swap into. They're swapping into the Ferrari Gator and we're going to have a great matchup because if they have Ice Beam, that's fine. If they have Crunch, that's fine. Like we don't really care too much about what they have here. And so we can just go ahead and go for the Acid Spray, drop the defense, use no shield here because if it's a Crunch and they get the debuff, it would be better to no shield the first one, but they decide to go for the Hydro Cannon. They're just going to lose this game right now. Next opponent, we're going to have the Charger Buck, and this is kind of what I wanted to say as well. Like, this team definitely struggles a little bit against those electric type Pokemon, and I would mostly use different Pokemon if I just had kind of different Pokemon available. But again, it is only the Catch Cup currently, and so we will be able to catch a move here, though. On the Catch Cup, we catch the move over the Discharge against our Naganadal as I swap out into the Mandibus. This is actually kind of nice for us, because what we can do is we can use a Shield here. Hopefully, it's going to be a Dark Pulse. It is an Air Raid Ace, which we would have been able to survive. Dark Pulse is actually doing, an, like, too much damage for us at this range. But what we can do is we can go for the Sludge Bomb to do a ton of damage against them. And now they're hopefully in range where I can just go for one Aerial Ace with my own um, Mandibus and then just over farm a lot. I'm going to over farm before because they have, of course, the Electric type still available for them. And so I kind of want to have some energy before so I would be able to punish them if they want to come back into that Pokemon. So we had 100 energy. I can go for an Aerial Ace. But sadly, this is not really enough. As you can see here, Snarl is barely doing any damage. And and we're gonna see as well that now the opponent can go for one more aerial ace, but that's not all. They can even go for another one. And so we're going to be way, way too low in terms of our health. And it's going to be a little bit scary, especially as they're swapping into Nazuma. And so everything is down to Tentacruel. Can we farm them all the way down here? That is the question, as you're gonna see as well. The opponent is gonna go for the discharge. We're going to use a shield and we're gonna have some amazing lag, which I don't think it really mattered, but they can just barely get to another move there in time. And so this is going to be it for this game and we can move on to the next opponent. Very spicy. Rampados, especially in this kind of elo range, is quite an interesting pick, but yeah, again, like it's catch card, people just have some fun, which is always kind of lovely to see. And Rampados is actually very good against my team. My entire team kind of loses to Rampados because like poison typing is not as great against Rock, I think. And um, they do super effective damage against my lead, plus also some neutral damage against our backline. So Rampados is actually fairly decent here. But we're gonna see here the Mantine going for an Aerial Ace. They are going to be crazy debuffed, and so hopefully we can get some extra energy. What I found kind of interesting, though, is that they decide to go ahead and go for an Aerial Ace here. Like, any other move would be better, though. Like, even if they have a Water Pulse, which is not super effective, like the Ice Beam would be, I think it's still going to be a better one to go for than, yeah, whatever they try to do here. But we can now swap into the Naganadil Neg as he's gonna get the Victory Bell in. And this is perfect. Victory Bell is getting completely hard walled by Naganadil and so we can try to just boost our attack up and can we get a second full sweep here with this weird Pokemon. Let's find out as we can go for another fell stinger trying to buff our attack even further. Plus two attack now. The opponent goes down. In comes the Rampados. Rampados cannot take the poison jabs and so the opponent decides to forfeit. Next opponent, we're going to encounter here the Skeledurge in the lead. Going to be a fairly decent one for us, but the opponent swaps out and now into the Skarmory. And maybe I should have just swapped out earlier directly into my Tentacruel, but I was a little bit sluggish, so I decided to stay in for a little bit here and see how this is going to go. And 
Yeah, I could have played definitely a little bit better here. The opponent going to decide to go for a Brave Bird. Totally fine for us. We generate energy faster than the opponent, so we're going to outspeed them all the time anyway. But of course, I don't really want to get hit by a Shadow Brave Bird from this Pokemon. But I decided to go for a little bit of a risky play of going for the Aerial Ace. And this was not ideal, as I can still survive this. I am forced to use a shield now. And we have to hope that we can still kind of align ourselves correctly as I don't really want to have the fire and ghost tape at least against Minor Ganondale because of course Poison Jab is going to be resisted. And look at this, it's going to be the Shadow on Ninetales and this is going to be not a great time for us. We can still go for the Skull here against the opponent and this is going to not get the debuff at all and this is going to be insanely impactful. Why is it impactful? If we got the debuff 50% chance, I would have been able to survive this incoming Shadow Ball. Now I'm not able to do that and so the opponent can actually go for another charge move and this actually changes quite a lot because now the opponent is going to be able to get me insanely low I can still knock them out here but I would have had enough health to survive at least like three charms to go for one more aerial ace later on and as we're gonna see here we do massive amounts of damage with poison jab against them and this is clearly aerial ace range there would be energy dry and I would be able to win the game 50% chance to lose or win the game here which is kind of why I don't like scald Honestly, Scald is like one of those moves that I really would like to see changed for the future. Here we're going to have the Powder Snow variant of the Alolan Sand Slash. It is very unlikely to encounter the Shadow Claw variant because both variants are kind of equal currently. I would say even that Powder Snow is a little bit better in certain scenarios. And definitely against our team, Powder Snow is quite annoying because you have two Pokemon that are also weak against the Ice typing with our Flying type in the lead and our Dragon type in the back. So it is not quite ideal, but we still have a chance here because the opponent decided to use a shield here on the Scald, which I did not really understand, but I'm happy about this because they're double debuffed. Now I can swap out into my Mandibus while still keeping one Scald alive, which can be really impactful for a later matchup. So let's see. We can overfarm by quite a bit against the opponent which is going to be great for us this is going to be the opponent's surf coming through doing no damage because i debuffed i make a little bit of a mistake here going for the aerial ace maybe it could have just went straight for the full farm down but i was not thinking that they would get to a surf that early again at the end of the day it doesn't really do too much damage but still it kind of puts us closer to the damage range where they can go for one ice punch and knock me out and we will find this out very soon most likely as the opponent swaps back into their sands i can swap out as well go for the skull with my tender and see what they want to do with that. We can reach that one. They're gonna get the final shoot from the opponent and another attack drop, which is kind of important as well. As now, I should be able to survive an Ice Punch even without using a shield here with my Mandibus. And this is going to be great. Why? Because you're going to have a shield advantage with the Nagarandel in the back against whatever they have in the back. Nagarandel has an insane attack stat, has a Sludge Bomb as like a great move to hit opponents with. So hopefully there's going to be something in the back that I can deal with, right? wrong there was no way of me winning this game like literally there was no way of me winning this game and we're gonna have this pokemon straight away again here shadow whiskash again like i really hope that scald gonna get nerfed for the next season make it 30 percent or make it like 20 percent for the debuff chance like don't really you don't really need to touch the energy or like the damage output of it i just don't like the 50 50 coin split if you win a game or not because like it actually happens so often where like the debuff completely decides the game here the opponent gonna get a back-to-back -back debuffs with scald which is going to allow them to survive those dark pulses way easier which is a little bit annoying because now yeah what can i really do here i can try to go for another aerial ace which they also most likely would survive after two debuffs here and as you can see they can now let the aerial ace go through and this is a prime example on why scald is so annoying and why it's like something that i definitely don't really want to see anymore like they got back-to-back -back scald Devils, it was like a 25% chance of this occurring, and this allowed them to align themselves. And like this is yes, there are chances in the main CS games. There are a lot of chances in the main CS games, and a lot of factors involved that are like with luck and stuff like this of a move even hits, or if you're gonna get like a flint chance, or if you're gonna get a Pokemon to sleep and stuff like this. But I don't really know any of them that's 50%. And 50% is just the annoying thing because if it's like 60, 70%, you would more expect that this happens more often. And so you can kind of more mitigate it and try to look in if this Pokemon would be balanced if you're going to get the debuff like two times in a row or something. But if with a 50 50 split, basically on PE Poke, it always kind of not get the debuff on the first one, which kind of makes um, Whiskash rank a little bit lower than it's supposed to be. 
And in reality, you get the debuff quite often and it's just going to make a complete difference in the game itself, which is just not something that I like to see. But anyway, we're going to still be able to sweep the final opponent here with the Nagandel. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Have good luck grinding the Dragon-type Pokemon for this thing and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.